yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's chapter oh, three. Oh, I'm sorry, Shan, before you start. So um, the, <clears throat> sorry. And we need to like mer push our changes because the chapters are like really, they're off, just FYI. Um, I submitted a PR for, I don't know who re uh, reviews them though and approves them. I don't know if John does everything, all the PRs, um, but it hasn't been, the chapter I presented hasn't been um, approved. Ah, okay. So I'll check it. Hmm? I'll check it. I'll check it after. Okay. So, and then, so next week we have eight and nine. So I'm assuming, obviously, that's going to be me and Justin. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll have the Usenet text, chapter nine. Okay. All right. I'll just prepare like 30 minutes worth the material mm -hmm. so that both me and Justin can go in one session. Mm -hmm. And it'll be our last session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really miss. You really missed Justin's session. It was in really interesting the week he did the um, his presentation. I really like it. <laughs> yeah. Topic modeling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know that back in the day when I had an advisor who was consuming all my time. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. All right. So let's get um started. Uh, so. Sorry, this is not chapter three, by the way. <laughs> so um, the is just um, a kind of um, case study comparing Twitter archives. So it's uh, Julia Suge and David Bravison that they are comparing their um, historical tweets to see some kind of how we can do some kind of analysis on them. Um, so. The, basically, the objective of the chapter is just to show us how we can do kind of some kind of work frequencies and um, how what usage changes and also like um, um, how we can find the favorites and retweet the number of them. Uh, but fortunately now, Twitter, they have like endpoints that they have implemented some of these like retweets. Um, you can get it at the one of the end point, um, the number of retweets for each tweet. So uh, in the previous analysis, they need to calculate this one, but now when you graph tweets uh, from Twitter, they will have this kind of number. So let's um, get it. So what I did was like um, the, oh, okay. I think um, I have not run the new, right, okay. Um, what they did basically, um, they use the data Julia Slinger and David Robinson, and they provide a CSV file with the data. They read the file and do that. So what I did, I used um, academic tweet R, which is basically um, a Twitter API version to implementation package in R that can graph tweet from Twitter. Um, but the from Twitter version to API. So there is R package that can graph from Twitter version one in R. What is it called? Is it tweet R or what is it called? Um, uh, what is what called? Yeah, the name of the package. Uh, Academic Twitter? No, no, no. Um, in R, the one that does version one. Oh, anyway. That's version one. R, R tweet? Yeah. R tweet was a. R, yeah, R tweet. That. Yeah, R tweet. So um, R tweet does not actually, I think, basically works in the new version. So I already applied for Twitter API version two as academic and I got access to it. And that will give you an access to 10 million tweets per. Uh, per month with free without any payment. Uh, yeah. So uh, hey, I. You yeah. said you said our tweet doesn't support what? Um, Twitter API version two. Uh, interesting. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, that's that's the purpose and motivation for coming up uh, uh, in, uh, doing this academic R. Um, which support um, um, 
Twitter API, API version to academic firm. Yeah, because like this API is not free for everyone. It's free for only academic that they can apply to Twitter. And if they are approved, they can grab to it. Uh, and you can grab to it historical tweet with this one. And I think our tweet only grab streaming, right? You can stream data about this one. Um, you can grab to it from all the way from 20, 2006 to now. So every tweet that is available in Twitter server, you can get it using this package. Yeah, and uh, you can get like 10 million tweets per month. So, um, so basically, um, oh God, right, okay. So I think I have not even put the uh, code here. I don't want it to run again. I don't know, um, maybe I can share my screen again. Uh, let me share my R so that we can see that. Hmm. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. So basically, um, this academic R, this is just the code to get tweets from these two handles, Julia Singh and David Robinson. So you just supply the users. And that is, they have a function called get all tweets that can you can just supply the user, they start and end it, and the data path where you save the tweet and this the number of tweets you want. Here I put infinite. What does that mean? Is that um, I need the whole tweet between David Robinson and Julia Singh between these years. So that's basically, um, they have a lot of uh, 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 functions that you can graph uh, Twitter data. So let me share this screen again. Right. Mm. So after getting the tweets, they have a function called bind tweets um, where it will basically grab all the tweets because when I crawl them, I save them in this data file. And when you use this function, it will put all the tweets in tidy format. So here, all the tweets now, these are the tweets. And it means we have this number of tweets um, and we can see like now we have different kind of information, uh, conversation ID, a lot of stuff we have. And I just pull out the interesting part that we work on. Um, so these are some of the information you have, teach ID, user, username, the language. Um, yeah, so these are some of the information. So interesting, like um, for low resource languages, um, African languages, all these languages we have, Twitter does not have Twitter API does not allow you to crawl tweet to any of the African languages. So Twitter, I think they have 34 or 37 languages that you can, if you want to tweet in English in Los Angeles, you can say, just give me tweet in English in Los Angeles. But for African languages, you cannot get um, any tweets through uh, Twitter API. Um, so one way, because currently we're working with that, one way to get this tweet from African languages, for example, one of my language is, what we did, we just like create a stop word um, in my language, which are words that are frequently used. For example, in English, the is, these are frequent words that I use in English. So what we did, like we pass this kind of stop words to Twitter API and uh, uh, given a location, for example, let's say Nigeria, give us all the tweet with this um, stop word. Then when we have this tweet, then we can, uh, get the tweet for a particular language. Also, this top word may overlap between one language to another. So for example, in Nigeria, you can have top word between one, because we have over 300 language. So you can have top word in one language that are cut across. So when we grab tweet with uh, stop word, then we go over to use Google ID. So uh, there is a package called Google. Um, so there is Google API 
that you can use to detect language. So Google can detect all the language for Africans. So we can pass this tweet to uh, tweet uh, to Google API and say um, uh, which language is this, and that's how we were able to get tweet. Um, so that is about that. And here, just we are trying to find out how many tweets do we um, have for each of these Julia Silge and David Rasmussen per year. So here we just grab the um, the year and yeah and the month and this is basically one of them the year you can see and also we just plot them here. Uh, so we can see uh, David Robinson was not really active. Yeah, of course he was on Twitter, but he was not active. But um, he started doing. Uh, Twitter at this very year, and uh, he even reached the, uh, he even surpassed, somehow surpassed the uh, Julia Senge, um in this year. So in total, we can see the David Robinson, um, his tweet, and also the uh, Julia Senge tweet. This ad. So this is basically just trying to grab the Twitter in this uh, page, uh, getting the data uh, from the Twitter and uh, trying to find out how many tweets each of these have. And also, uh, I think one interesting thing we use um, in our work is like, um, instead, for example, if we want to detect a language, we really, we use Google language ID, but there is a particular package in R, um, what is it called, that given, you can give that package a tweet and ask it to classify which language is that. And we use that one also that is package in R that you can use to uh, detect language for any text. All right, so, so now we get our data into R and um, we may try to do some kind of uh, word frequencies for words uh, between David and Julia Slinge. Um, yeah, so before that, uh, because we know stop word are uh, not interesting word that we don't need to find frequencies. So um, we need to remove them from our tweet. And um, we need to, because Twitter data have different kind of stuff in it. So on next token use a different tokenizer, which is called uh, tweets. So we know on next token that we use to uh, on next words or sentence, but this one we are not on nesting word or we are not in using a different kind of tokenizer that uh, uh, which is specialized tokenizer that retains hashtags and stuff like that. And um, we want to uh, retain that in our tweet. So here it's just a kind of cleaning. As here you can see, we are removing some stuff here. And uh, we call the package, you can, you can see here, we call this, um, we remove all this one. And also here we uh, remove uh, retweets, uh, you can see. And basically this is what we have. So let's look at the frequency, what frequency now we clear our tweets um, so that it does not contain retweet. And also we remove some stuff from it. And, uh, uh, it is ready. Let's see the word frequency in each one. So this is um, okay, right? So this is the word frequency in each for each word um, between Julia Silvia and David Robinson. Um, I'm not sure whether this is interesting or um, useful way to plot this information because this doesn't sound to me like informative. What can you say about that? But this is basically what they do. So what they're saying is like um, words that are closer to this line, these are words that uh, maybe uh, they have equal frequencies. Um, but I don't know if this is the right, uh, a good way for now to present this information. Can anybody jump in? Uh, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, you see, you know, mm. David Robinson tweets about Python, dplyr, broom, which I think is like his package. He okay. tweets more. I mean, it's not, uh, 
I think that in this book in general, they don't pay a lot of attention to usefulness of things. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but yeah. I don't know. I don't think this one is like the worst offender. <laughs> things okay. like that. Okay. In the book. Because like, look at this one here. This side doesn't make any sense to me. This extreme end, you know? Um, well, doesn't... I think that, I think that there you just want to color the text a different color than the data points. Uh, right now it's uh, it's black on black, so maybe like uh, gold. Ah, uh, okay, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this is basically from the text. So that way they said, um, words near the line in are uh, used with about equal frequencies, while words away far away from the line are used by much by one person compared to the other. Yeah. Um, right. So this is basically um, just the statistics, um, word frequencies um, in the tweets for David Robinson and uh, uh, Juliet Lee. Right, so now here is comparing word usage. Um, what this is about, um, let me see, do I skip something? Oh, okay, I didn't skip anything. So what this is about is comparing what you said. Um, the previous section, it just compared um, the word statistics um, for each of them. But here they will compare the usage of each word, um, which word one uses often. So we are not using the whole tweet. Um, so we will figure out uh, maybe a particular year. So here we are filtering um, one of the tweets in particular year and use it um, and find out the word usage between the two. So the same thing here, we're gonna see how many times each person uses each word and keep only words 10 that um, word that I use more than 10 times. So they use um, log ratio, log odd, something like that. Uh, let me see. Am I sharing in browser or what? No. Uh, you're sharing your R markdown. You're rendered hmm. R markdown. I'm supposed to be sharing the browser. By the way, uh, while you're figuring that out, uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at your, your mutate if command where you uh, get the, the odds ratios. So it's right before getting the log odd ratios. Okay, yeah. What do, you you remember, do you remember if they use list? I Because I, I remember reading this chapter and mm -hmm. uh, I'm just trying to think about, because that would make, wouldn't that that line make every numeric column a list column? And then I'm just maybe it's because I don't. Are you talking about here? Well, I can't see your cursor, but it's just uh, the it's the only mutate if that's currently on the screen. Actually, I think I can see your cursor. Well, oh, uh, okay. No, now I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, let me. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm not sharing this and I'm sharing the browser. So why the browser? It's a probably. I did uh I did just see your what uh, about now? Can you see that? Yeah, now yes, it is exactly what's highlighted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so you no, I just so, it's an interesting command. Interesting line of code. Mm. So here I said um we are comparing the word usage um, for each user um, and see how um, the word frequency for each user varies uh, within a year. Um, so that's the it. So um, here, for example, we are trying to remove um, the usernames for each user um, for other people which I retweet and also. 
um, here, as you can see, that um, uh, they are using logs. I, I don't. I, I don't actually. Um, uh, this is the formula. So this is the formula um, for log odd ratio. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Actually, I understand why this formula is being used. I've read it. Um, so yeah, anybody can jump in and. Uh, So um yeah, I mean it just gives you a positive number if like you're not I don't think you're supposed to interpret it like a you know metrically. I think it's just if you get a positive number, mm. David uses the word more. If you get a negative number, Julia mm. uses it more. If you get zero, mm. then uh they use it equally. Right, so this is basically how um, they implemented the log, uh, the formula. And now the interesting scene is they want to see what are some words that have been about equally likely to come from both David and um, uh, Julia. So here is these are some words that me likely comes equally from the two so i don't know if this really makes sense oh there's another one par here email case um i'm not sure if this really um, make any sense uh yeah um also which word are most likely to be from Julia's account or from Debbie's account. So this one is like separate, the, the separate ones. So which one is most likely to come from that as well? So here we can see we have for uh, Drop and Julia, uh, you can see use R, these, so traffic, traffic and also Julia, we have Omega, Uta, Gosh. So what they are saying here is that um, at this very here, David Robinson went to uh, use R twenty use R, use R, use R twenty two thousand sixteen, and he has been uh, doing tweet at that. And uh, Julia Sluge went to Utah, Utah, and um, she was also been uh, tweeting about that. Yeah, so that is um, the just the statistics about the words usage here. Right, so. I think this is maybe the second to the last, so the session is very slow. So change in word usage. Uh, so here they look at how word changes um, within the month. So you can see the previous one, we look at the overall word usage. That is um, the frequency of the word and also um, how possible frequency of the next of, of the word uh, between each one, but here they want to see how words changes. Which word frequencies have changed the fastest in our Twitter feed, or which word have we tweeted about at higher? Right, so this may sound interesting, I think, um, because we will try to see the change of word in our tweet. Maybe some patterns may come. Yeah, so the first thing is like, they bin their data um, into one month. And um, also within that month, they calculate each word by user. So that is what they did. And uh, under the binning, each word that appears greater than 30, they use it only. And this is where we have, we have, uh, user account, the word, the count, the total time, and the total word. And here we can see the count tell us how many times that person used that word in that bin. So we bin our data in uh, per month. So you can see here we have this very month, the first month, I think, um, the first month here, which we bin. Um, these are some of the words that David Robinson has been using. And um, uh, these words have frequency 
uh, the total time greater than 30. That is why there are some words that have been used, but um, we filter them out. Oh, these are some of the interesting stuff we have. So here we can see the Julia Seagate also for the first month that we've been. Uh, these are the uh, have. So the total time tell us how many words that person uses in that bin. So here for the first bin, which is the first month, he uses the R set this number of times. Um, for the sec, I mean, in, in the same bin, first month, he uses this word broom this time. So it means I was, uh, um, um, so this uh, the number of times he used that one. And the word total column tell us how many times that person used that word over the whole year. So uh, this is the number of thirteen hit the hole here. Um, right. So the next thing is um, they want to find out um, how they can model this information of the word usage. So now here we take this data set data this data frame and we nest it um, using this next and we have this come up somehow nested list and our word and um, in each row we can see we have the combination of um, information about each word and um, they will use this information to use uh, to do like somehow kind of modeling for using GLM uh, for each tree, uh, for each uh, word. So these are the questions they want to try to answer. Was a given word mentioned in a given time being? Because you can see we have for it, we have different kind of being. This is the first being also um, information about David, and this is the first being information about Julia Sligi. So we have uh, more beans here. So what they are trying to do is like, they will use, um, they, they model, they will do model this uh, information, try to find out that uh, is a particular word mentioned in a given time being. That's what they are trying to do. So uh, here we use this thing because here we can see we have nested list and uh, they do map. Uh, par and this is the GLM and they do something like this uh, and finally they use broom here and the yeah of course so here um, I really don't understand um, why they are using with this um, adjusted p value because like they calculated this something called a, a, a p adjusted p value and um, they filtered with uh, value 0 0.05. I, I don't know what the meaning of this, why they filter with that, because like maybe the um, less it is more useful, the slope or what? Um, uh, does anybody know why do we use this uh, adjusted p values here? Um, I, it's just because they run a lot of models. So mm. when you run a lot of models by um, just by chance you would expect to get p values under 0 0.05 ah so you have to adjust the p value downward so the so the because each p value is associated with an error rate so a mm. p value of 0 0.05 is a 5% error rate okay but, oh. but if you run you know 100 tests then on average and you do that all at once you're mm. bound to get errors. So your error rate is not 5%. It's like, I don't know what it would be. It would be close to one. Mm. Uh, and that's obviously a pretty bad error rate. So, so yeah, so that's why they do that. I don't, and then they, I mean, they do it just to filter for, mm. um, to have like a visual visualization, I think at the mm. end, but right. and, and yeah. generally yeah, that's the reason. Okay. So I don't know that I just changed from 0 0.05 because I don't know why they do that and try to see what will happen if I change that. And now when they filter for the adjusted p value, they have this and try to visualize um, the result. Uh, so for David Robinson, I think we can see like here that uh, they visualize that. And we can see this is the word that they have been using. 
these are here and it goes down which basically what i said like um, uh, at that year he went to use our conference and uh, at the conference he has been tweeting about these are and then when he left the conference and uh, yeah the it goes down um so also here for julius okay, we can see um this is uh, but i don't know why like uh, um, the R start for Julius Lige that drops like um, down and uh, at the January is so high and she was not consistent maybe uh, by the end of the year, maybe she was busy or some stuff like that. So yeah, that is about um, the uh, word changes usage. Uh, and finally, I think this is the um, last section. Um, as I've made mention, um, uh, now the Twitter have API that can do the, uh, you can find the, they have the endpoint that you can find the number of retweet for each tweet. And um, um, you don't need to really do any other things to get the number of retweet. Uh, another important case of tweet is how many times they are like or retweeted. So here, um, yeah, so here I didn't even do that. Um, okay, let's see which word are more likely to be retweeted or favorite. So they use favorites here and I just use light because um, in my tweet that I crawl, I don't have favorite column. So um, because they themselves, their data set, like they had to download another data set, um, another tweet that would favorite. But the one I had, there wasn't any favorite. So what I have is like a retweet count um, and also like count. So you can see here, um, yeah. So here you can see retweet count, which was basically what they were trying to do in this section. But um, what I crawl, it already has the, um, the uh, retweet count and this uh, basically you can see it, the same id of the tweet maybe they are retweet and um, stuff like that i mean they are the same tweet but they just retweet so you can see they are tweet of the same id and um, the like counts um, which also uh, they try to uh, find the favorite um, but uh, here we also have the uh, like counts um, for each tweet which is this and yeah, so that is, I, I think, the end of the information we have here for the chapter, which is very slow, um, I mean, short. Yeah, I think I don't have anything. Yeah, that's the end. Right. Um, Justin? Yes. So I think this is um, what I have. This is the end of the uh, chapter. I think, let me see. Yeah, so this is the uh, the end part of the chapter where I discuss about this paper, right, and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So this is so short, uh, the case study. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, is Leila around? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, okay. <laughs> right. What's up? Uh, I don't hear what you. Okay, let me. Um, so this is academic Twitter. Academic tweet. Have you used that package to? Um, uh, no, I haven't. Ah. First time I'm hearing about it. I'm used to uh, our tweet, uh, but I haven't used the Twitter API in a couple of years now, so that makes sense. I still get the subscription, uh, okay. uh, the emails from the Twitter developer, whatever uh, listserv. Mm. Um, so I knew there was a new there was a new API version. Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. So this is the. Um, the package and um, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. 
Can you see my screen? Yes. Ah, okay. So this is the package, and um, I mean, it's really easy to use, and um, I mean, it has been helpful for me. I mean, I don't know the way. So it has many functions, like um, you can grab Black Lives Matter tweet or the tweet. Uh, this is like the one we uh, should just give in the user account and get the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's basically simple to just get the tweet from using it. Yeah. Pretty cool. So next week, we're going to have like two rights, um, you and Justin. Yeah. OK. Yes, that is the plan. Mm. Awesome job, Shan. Sorry? Awesome job. Awesome job. <laughs> uh, OK. Two thumbs up. I don't want to go to bed. OK. So I think today we um, almost finished. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are we? What's the plan? So next week uh, we will okay. finish. Yes, and the then, plan. And then we just are we? Do we put a notification on a message in the new exactly. groups? Exactly. Yep. So um, I will chat John that um, we are finishing the book next week, and. Um, uh, do we need to take a break or we just continue? What do you think? I, I don't feel like I need to take a break, but I feel like people <laughs> will probably want to start in the new year. Yeah, wow. it depends on how many people who want to join. Mm. Remember, John always sends out a survey on when to meet, whatever it's called. Ah, uh, okay. I went to meet um, the other thing. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be, I think people are going to want to, me up in the new year. Okay. Also, I think I would like to. I would like to start in. <laughs> I have to learn Python in three weeks. So. What? 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 Why? What are you doing? <laughs> it's like a, a spurned lover. Why? What? Nothing. Yeah, because like you are the R. You are so R. <laughs> <laughs> um. Because unfortunately, my in my program, all of my uh, quantitative courses are done in Python. Wow. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, no one, no one here is really an R person. Uh, so um, what the plan um, uh, to learn the Python? Uh... <laughs> so I bought a course on Udemy, uh -huh. and it's supposed to teach you all the basics in a hundred days, mm -hmm. and I have. 28. Oh, nice. 21. Oh, nice. I, can't do math. I have 21 days, mm -hmm. give or take. So mm -hmm. my goal is to do like at least three days a day. <laughs> three days worth of material in one day. Ah, okay. It's going to be yeah. overkill, but um, yeah. it'll get me like some foundations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I use the book, this, um, I really recommend it, um, Python Crash Course. Um, that book actually it made a lot of sense. Um, I really enjoy it. Um, um, I also had to use the Python in some ways for you know machine learning and stuff like that because all my colleagues, all my people, also even my supervisor, they are using Python some stuff like that. So yeah, 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 so, exactly, exactly. Like I, I know I, I'm taking a machine learning course coming up and. I need to be like yeah. solid in Python. Yeah. By spring. All right. So, Justin, what do you suggest? Um, do we take a week break or we just um... for the new the new course? Yes. The new I week. think I think we're just gonna have to take a three week break. Okay. Four week break. Yeah, okay. I don't think that's up to us, Shem. I think it's gonna be whoever wants to join the um the new book and what they're about. What everyone's general availability looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I would write to John that uh, we are finishing next week, and um, uh, maybe also John, like it takes him like two or three weeks before he pull up the uh, information and people respond, and uh, he set it up. So maybe more or less three weeks. Yeah, and that usually takes time to get like feelers and. Mm -hmm. like how many people want to be a part of this book club and then what their availability looks like. So he always posts them like 
three weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, thank you all. Um, um, yeah. Yay. So okay. we'll see you next week. Yeah. Awesome. The big uh, send up. I'll bring. I'll bring cake. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 See you next week.